What we're going to be going over today are past paper questions on percentage uncertainties. The best way to tackle these questions is first off to pause this video and use this as an independent learning resource. Once you've paused this video, you can check the answers after you've worked through the questions. Okay, well, let's start with our first question. So this is question eight from the AS Physics paper of 2018. We have a student trying to determine the power of a resistor. They use the formula P is equal to I squared times R for this. We're given some values for the current. We're given some values for R, the resistance as well. What is the percentage certainty in the value of P. Okay, folks, now this is a perfect opportunity for you guys to pause this video and attempt this question. So let's have a look at the solution. Now, the first thing you're going to notice that I've circled this formula. We're looking for the percentage certainty in the power. The equation is power is I squared times R. So in this case, we are multiplying quantities. If we're multiplying quantities, that means that we need to add the percentage uncertainties of whatever is being multiplied. So in this case, the percentage uncertainty in P is going to equal the percentage uncertainty in I squared plus the percentage uncertainty in R. So the percentage uncertainty in R. Now, if you remember from our video of combining uncertainties, the percentage uncertainty in I squared is actually equal to twice the percentage uncertainty in I. So that's going to be plus the percentage uncertainty in R. If you're not quite so sure where this two came from, have a look through the previous video, but in a nutshell, anytime you're raising a quantity to the power, um, this is equal to the numerical power times the percentage uncertainty in the quantity itself. Okay, well, let's put some numbers into this. So this is going to equal twice the percentage uncertainty in I. Remember, our percentage uncertainty is equal to our absolute uncertainty, which for I is 0.2. So I've underlined there, so it's going to be 0.2 over our measured value, which in this case is 4.0 amps times 100 plus the percentage uncertainty in, um, in R, which is its absolute uncertainty. In this case, that's 0.3. So absolute uncertainty over the measured value, which is 3.0, like so, times 100 again. And if we put that into a scientific calculator, or if we quickly work it out by hand, we should get 20% percent, which is the correct answer. So that works out to be B. So the correct answer in this case is B. Okay, perfect. Let's move on to the written question next. Okay, folks, so this is um, question six, part C from the 2018 AS Physics, uh, depth in physics paper from the OCR specification. So the first bit is that we have a cable which consists of 17 tightly packed copper wires. I'm just going to underline a little bit of uh, essential information here. So I bet there's going to be a trick later on in the question with that number 17. So we'll probably have to calculate the area and we'll have to times it by 17 because we can see that um, the whole cable uh, consists of uh, um, 17 of those uh, little wires. Okay, well, explain how the student should measure precisely the diameter of the wire. You've probably done this practical in class, and uh, the way we always measure the diameter of a wire is using a micrometer. So that's one of the things that I'm going to write. So I'm going to say use a micrometer. Like so. 
Um, additionally, when we are measuring the diameter of a wire, let's say that this line over here is a wire, it's really important to check that the diameter is consistent on different points along the wire. So we could take a measurement here, let's say here, and let's say here, and then we could average those um, those, those readings. So um, we can say that uh, we can repeat the measurements on different points along the wire. So it's really important that we're checking on different points, we're not repeating the same measurement on the same point, different points along the wire, and we can also calculate the mean and calculate the mean, which is essentially uh, which essentially means just taking the um, average. Okay, let's have a look at the next part. So the student measures the resistance of the cable to be 1.86 plus or minus 0.02. We've got the length of the cable. And what we need to do is determine the resistivity of the copper. So quite a lot of scope for error in this question. So I'm going to need to be quite careful and just double check my calculations. This is indicated by the fact that this is a three mark question. So the first thing I'm going to do is just write down the formula for the resistivity of copper in this case, which is the resistance multiplied by the total area divided by the by divided by the length if you cannot remember this formula in fact i always encourage you to just double check the formula in your formula sheet now the resistance of the cable has been measured and we have that value to be 1.86 we don't need to worry about the uncertainty yet so this plus or minus 0.02 will only worry about this when we're calculating the percentage of certainty later on. Okay, well, so for the resistance, I'm going to write 1.86 times my total area. Now, remember, this is a cable. And if you notice over here, the cable is written in bold. So this number 17 which we had right at the start of the question is going to be really really important so we need to calculate the area of just one of those wires over here and um, then we're going to need to multiply that by 17 so remember the uh, assuming that the that they're circular which is a very good assumption in this case the area is going to be pi times r squared so to determine the resistivity of copper, this is going to be 1.86 times the area. So 17, because there's 17 of them, multiplied by pi times the um, radius squared. We're given the diameter of the wire, so we're going to have to be quite careful to divide it by 2 and make sure that's in the correct meter, in the, in the correct unit. So the diameter is given to be 0.12 plus or minus 0.01 millimeter. So we both need to divide that number by 2 and times it by 10 to the power of minus 3 before squaring it. So we can write this as, I'm going to introduce some brackets over here just so that we uh, are not confused. So 0.06. So just 0.12 divided by 2. Now milli stands for 10 to the power of minus 3. So times 10 to the power of minus 3. That's our radius, this whole thing in the brackets. And then we're going to be squaring that. All we need to do then is divide that by the length of the cable itself, which is 21 meters. Now if we put that into a scientific calculator, we're going to get an answer 
up to two significant figures of 1.7 times 10 to the power of minus 8 ohm meters. So it's going to be 1.7 times 10 to the power of minus 8 ohm meters. Okay, folks, now let's have a look at the percentage uncertainty in the actual uh, resistivity. The first thing I'm going to do is just just on the side here I'm going to write down the formula for resistivity once again that we use in terms of those quantities. So uh, this is resistance times the area. Now remember the area is given by pi times uh, the uh, radius which is the diameter over 2 all of it squared divided by the length. Now we're given the absolute uncertainty in all of those quantities. For example, the absolute uncertainty in the resistance is given over here. The absolute uncertainty in the diameter is, uh, is given over here. And of course we have the absolute uncertainty in the length. As always, the first thing we need to decide is which uncertainties we're going to add. And in this case, we are multiplying and dividing quantities. So every time we multiply and divide quantities, we add the percentage uncertainties. So all we need to do is find the percentage certainty in R, find the percentage certainty in D squared, find the percentage certainty in L, and then just add them. We don't need to worry about pi and we don't need to worry about that division by 2 here. So let's get started. Well, let's get started with the percentage uncertainty in the length. So remember percentage certainty is plus or minus the absolute uncertainty divided by the value times 100. So for the percentage certainty in the length that's going to be 0 0.1 over 21 times 100. I'm just going to add some brackets uh, at the end and I'm going to times everything by 100 uh, right at the end plus the percentage uncertainty in uh, let's do resistance next. So um, the percentage uncertainty in the resistance is going to be the absolute uncertainty which is plus or minus 0 0.02 divided by our measurement which is 1.86 and finally I'm going to need to add the percentage uncertainty in d squared. Now remember this is squared so if it's squared I need to times the percentage certainty in d squared by 2. So I'm going to add that 2 over here 2 times the percentage uncertainty in d so that's going to be 0 0.01 over 0 0.12. So I can write this down as 0 0.01 over 0 0.12. And remember, I want these expressed as a percentage. So what I'm going to need to do is times everything by 100. If you have uh, written this uh, this, uh, this expression down, uh, chances are you're going to get the correct answer, which is 18% um, up to two significant figures in this case. Oh, we've already got the percentage sign, so we don't need to write that. Perfect. However, if you've calculated um, each of those individual percentage uncertainties, you will have scored one mark. For example, if you've just found the percentage uncertainty in the, the radius or the length, etc., etc., you'll have scored one out of two. Okay, folks, so this was a complete uh, past paper question. Um, with, uh, cal that involves calculating the resistivity and also involves calculating the percentage uncertainty in your calculation. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. If there are any questions